Hello and welcome to a video summarising everything you need to know when it comes to government and politics. My name is Barbara and in this video we will be looking at different types of ideologies, specifically conservatism, liberalism and socialism and how they set out the ways in which a government should be run. So let's begin. Now firstly, you might be wondering what ideology means. Now ideology is just a really fancy way of saying beliefs and ideas that people have about how to run a country and as I mentioned there are three major political ideas that influence how people think a country should be run from a political standpoint. The first is conservatism, the second is liberalism and the third is socialism. So we should, we'll go over all three in detail so that you can get a handle of the difference between each. Now let's begin with conservatism. Now, the word itself, conservatism, comes from the notion of wanting to conserve society as it is. Now, the principle when it comes to understanding human nature that this is embedded in is Thomas Hobbes's view that humans are essentially evil and without a strong government, society can become quite chaotic. Therefore, from a conservatism perspective, there's this viewpoint that a strong leader is needed of a strong government that preserves traditional values and the government should be quite powerful and forceful in order to impose this order. If we're left to our own devices as human beings, we will lead society to descend into a very chaotic state. Also, conservatism holds the perspective that we as humans are too disorganised and selfish to be left to our own devices and tradition should really be respected and change is something that can be quite suspicious. It's not something that conservatism would be completely against, but change, if and when it occurs, should be gradual and not dramatic. Furthermore, from the conservatist perspective, the government should be really strong to protect its citizens. Social order, private property and security is really key, even if it's at the expense of freedom, rights and equality. Now finally, from the conservatism perspective, there's this viewpoint that people aren't equal. In other words, some people don't have the same talent as others. There'll be some people who are just simply far more talented in one area than others. There'll be some people who are better at doing something than others. There's some people who are more academic and so on than others. We're not all created equal. So the conservatist perspective is that as a result of this inherent inequality, we all have different gifts and different traits. It's for this reason that you will see some people who own more than others, and some people are very good at amassing power. Now, that therefore means that some of these inequalities that we see built in, for example, the rich-poor divide, this stems from this lack of equality that we inherently have. Some people are simply better at business than others, hence why they become wealthy. Now, if we think about the liberalism perspective, now this is rooted in the notion that the individual is primary, the individual is first, and they're more important even than a group or society. And this is where the idea of individualism stems from. Now, the individual, and of course by extension humans, as opposed to perhaps the Hobbesian perspective that humans are evil and very chaotic, actually the liberalism perspective sees humans as being capable of acting quite rationally and humans are quite capable of personal development. As a result, we humans have inherent rights within us and our human rights and preserving our human rights is key for a liberalist. Also, humans, if left to their own devices, contrary to the Hobbesian views, can actually make quite good decisions. We as humans don't actually need a strong government to tell us what to do in every aspect of our lives. And the state, really, the role of the state is to help us all as individuals. However, of course, the state should also really put the person at the centre of everything. The person is more important than the community. And people have a social responsibility to look after each other. Therefore, liberalism believes in government by consent. What this means is we should have the power to choose our government and we can also, contrary to the conservatism perspective when it comes to tradition, the idea that we need to protect traditions, institutions like the monarchy, actually on the other side of the spectrum, the liberal perspective believes that if necessary, 
we can and should make massive changes to traditions that aren't good or aren't serving. So for example, areas like monarchs, unelected leaders, this can be overhauled and changed. Also, uh, from the liberalism perspective, people must always be in a position to give the permission before the government can exercise power and this is why democracy is so important. Liberals also don't believe that a free, balanced and tolerant society will naturally develop and the liberty of one person is always naturally a threat to another person, hence why the state is really important because it's the only way in which individual freedoms can be preserved for everybody. Finally, liberals believe that there should be a limited government, so there should be laws to control what the government can do, and the government's job is to really look after society, but we all have a say in who's elected. Now, the final and really key idea when it comes to ideologies of how a state should be run is, of course, that of socialism. Now, socialists believe humans actually love cooperating as a group. So this, again, going back to the fundamental beliefs of human nature, the socialism perspective believes that actually we as humans love being part of a group and we love cooperation. Now, from a socialist perspective, equality is key and the equality of everybody in a community is more important even more so than the individual rights for each person. So, of course, this is where perhaps socialists and liberals would clash. Also, from a socialist perspective, the state has a huge job in looking after all of us as a community, almost nannying us. So this is where the term of the nanny state comes from. This is the notion that the state is looking after us in all aspects of life, including giving us free health care, giving us free schools, even free housing when we need it. Furthermore, the socialist perspective believes that wealth should be equal amongst us all, and if it's not equal, it should be redistributed and divided equally amongst all. And as society currently stands, we're just too divided because of our class system. It's not right to have a middle class, an upper class, and a working class. Wealth needs to be redistributed. Now, do you remember that long ago, socialists used to focus on the massive divide between aristocrats that owned factories, in contrast to the majority of workers who had terrible living conditions and they worked in these factories. However, however, today, socialists focus on the divide between the upper classes, the middle classes and the working classes. And of course, they still want everybody to be part of the same class. And this can be achieved through the richest people in society being highly taxed in order to spread this wealth. So when they're highly taxed, a lot of the money that goes back into the government in terms of taxation is split up and divided amongst everybody to promote equality and to, of course, reduce the class system. Also, socialists believe that the government, which should have a big role in our lives, it should increase what is called the public sector. It should own more industries such as transportation and so on in order to employ more people in the public sector and give these people a fair pay. This is the opposite of the private sector. This means businesses which are owned by private individuals who can profit from them. Actually, the socialist perspective sees working for the state and working in the public sector perhaps getting less pay than what one would get if they run a very successful business which they owned privately actually this is a better option and also working for the state is actually more moral than selfishly working for a private business to make money for yourself so that's all if you found this video useful, we'd really appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up, but also make sure you visit our website, www.firststreettutors.com, where you find lots of revision materials to help you in your studies. Thank you so much for listening.